What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday. Sorry, this episode is a little bit delayed, but we are coming to you still on Monday. How are we doing, folks? I am I am just fine. I have no complaints. It's Monday. Um, you know, how, how are you is the is the real question. You're you're the one struggling. Not great. Not great. I've had a tough weekend. Saturday, I was real sick. Had 101 fever. Didn't feel great at all. Chills, aches, pains all day. Yeah. Coincidentally, the same day my parents left to go to Florida, which was unfortunate. This <laughs> they kept calling and being like, How is everyone? And my family's like, Well, Maria all of a sudden has 101 fever. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not great over here. Um and then it was weird. Then I I ended up feeling a little better Saturday night. Then, but that was, I was taking medicine, so I felt better. Then I felt sick again in the middle of the night. Then Sunday was kind of the same thing. Felt better, felt sick again. Then I get, I've talked about this. I get this like unbearable stomach pain that will last for like, and I know how long it lasts. So it will arrive at like 3, 4 p.m. the day before, and it will last until like 7 a.m. the next morning. It happens every single time. So as soon as this pain started at like 3, 4 p.m., I was like, fuck, I'm sick. And I'm also about to have this excruciating uh, stomach pain, which is exactly what happened. So therefore the episode was delayed because I, I just, I barely slept last night. By the way, I've taken a COVID test three days in a row, Saturday, Sunday, and this morning, all negative. So I feel like people, people are going to be like, Rhea, go to the fucking doctor. I know, but, but here's the thing, guys. I've been going to the doctor since I was 15. It's the same thing every time. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I mean, there was a time when you thought you needed to have your gallbladder removed. There was that period <laughs> of time. And then my stomach felt better. And it has felt better. But now it's this whole thing. And then and then the doctor's telling me, oh, it's the endometriosis. It's the whole thing. I'm tired of it. I'm tired, yeah. you know, I'm tired of going to the doctor. So therefore, the episode is late. Yes. Um, I barely slept last night. So we were going to do it earlier than what we did. But then I had to sleep a little bit this morning. I'm feeling a little better now. I have a little, I have some aches and pains. My head hurts a little bit. My throat burns. I don't know what's going on, but I know that I must not have COVID because I have tested negative every single day now. And I'm thinking, I don't have a fever anymore, which is good. I'm thinking maybe a little rundown, maybe a little sinus infection of some sort, maybe something else. Who knows? But I do know I feel better. None of us are doctors. <laughs> None of us are doctors. And I'm probably not going to go to the doctor because I do feel better every day. I have felt better every day. Mm -hmm. So hopefully tomorrow I just wake up feeling 100% or maybe later today I'll feel better. Who knows? Yeah, I hope so I too. do feel it's way better than, than Saturday and I do feel better than Sunday. So we're on a good trajectory here. Moving in the right direction. We uh, do have our live show on Thursday in LA. For those listening, you can still go uh, get tickets and yes. we'll see you there. We're very excited. Wells, our special guest. Yeah, so we, we, we have been prioritizing rest for you because we have a very busy week. <laughs> I feel like one of those singers who hurts their vocal cords and they're like, you, yeah. need, you need to rest or we're going to have to cancel the show. You need to yeah. rest. That's how I feel like I've been treated, which is nice though. And also traveling and everything. We got to fly to LA, the time difference, probably more important to rest than um, definitely do anything right. else because we want to be ready for this show. But yes, I am feeling better. So make sure you guys go get the tickets. Link is in the description. Wells will be there. There also will be some special guests in the audience too that are just coming for the fun of it. So that will be that exciting. True. Very exciting. Um, looking forward to seeing all of your beautiful faces there. Can't wait to be in LA. I just looked at the weather looks stunning. So it's, I feel like it's going to be um, a nice a nice week where it's a, it's a quick trip, but it's going to be a good one. So hopefully we see you guys there. And just to clear up the rest of the week we are going to be in LA there's a lot going on um there's a lot that Noah and Natalie have to get done so we don't have a Harry Potter episode coming out on Thursday this is a skip week I know I said like when we first announced this I said we we're doing one and two skip three four five six skip seven eight so 
this is a skip week. There is no Thursday Harry Potter, and there will be no Friday um, regular episode because we have to uh, fly back home. And no, like once again, Noah has to put together a live show, so we can't. <laughs> there's just no time in the day to record on Thursday and have him be able to put it out on Friday. So we will have an episode Wednesday for Bachelor, as always, and that'll be. Uh, all you hear from us this week. There you go. So let's get into it. Let's get into the topics. We got everything that's going down with Kim and Kanye. They've been posting all over social media all over the weekend. Kylie Jenner has officially given birth to her second child with Travis Scott. Rumors are swirling that Tom Holland and Zendaya have bought a house together. Major step for the two of them. And Brian Austin Green and Sharna are expecting a baby. Good for them. Happy for them. And we also have a great game of Beat Ryan Fran, a little trivia. So let's get into it, starting off with Kim and Kanye. Valentine's Day is coming up, and none of you should forget about it, especially if you're a guy listening to this podcast and you don't know what to get the girl in your life or somebody special in your life. You're like, what should I get them? I'm struggling. I don't know what to get Valentine's Day every year. You always will do just fine with something sweet. That's why you need Baked by Melissa in your life. Baked by Melissa is dessert for everyone. We love Baked by Melissa. We have Baked by Melissa for every single birthday that we have in this office, basically. Every time it's Fran's birthday, I get her Baked by Melissa. Every time it's my birthday, she gets me Baked by Melissa. Vice versa, everybody gets Baked by Melissa because we know that those little cupcakes just fit perfectly in your mouth and taste delicious at any time. And right now, you'll fall in love with their new Valentine's Day assortment there's great flavors the marshmallow creamy milk chocolate all these amazing flavors that will just melt in your mouth pop them right in baked by melissa is the way to go also you can enjoy baked by melissa during the super bowl valentine's day is right after the super bowl so get two in one get some for the super bowl get some for valentine's day and you will just have cupcakes galore so right now head to bakedbymelissa.com to order your valentine's day gifts right now So I'm sure everyone has been following what's happening with Kim and Kanye all over social media this past weekend. Kanye started off by posting about Northwest on TikTok. He posted a screen grab of Northwest on his main Instagram page and said something like, this is my first divorce. Somebody tell me what to do about North being on TikTok. He said, since this is my first divorce, I need to know what I should do about my daughter being put on TikTok against my will. So he posted that. which I think made Kim Kardashian say to herself, you know what? I'm fucking fed up with this because then she went to her Instagram story and posted a long note to Kanye and everybody else. She wrote Kanye's constant attacks on me in interviews and on social media is actually more hurtful than any TikTok North might create as the parent who is the main provider and caregiver for our children. I am doing my best to protect our daughter while also allowing her to express her creativity and the medium that she wishes with adult supervision because it brings her happiness. Divorce is difficult enough on our children and Kanye's obsession with trying to control and manipulate our situation so negatively and publicly is only causing further pain for all. From the beginning, I have wanted nothing but a healthy and supportive co-parenting relationship because it is what is best for our children and it saddens me that Kanye continues to make it impossible every step of the way. I wish to handle all matters regarding our children privately, and hopefully he can finally respond to the third attorney he has had in the last year to resolve any issues amicably. So I read this and I was like, finally, Kim, finally, she says something because Kanye has been blabbing his mouth all over the place about her, what's going on with the family, what happened prior on all these interviews, all over social media. And Kim has just kept herself living her life. And finally, she said something. Yeah, I think Kim is a a total mama bear. And like, I think Kim could deal with Kanye talking about her and saying things about her. But when he started to like throw North into the mix, that's when Kanye, that's when Kim was like, I can't, we can't be having this happen. Like posting screenshots of her TikTok. It's just, it also shows like, if you don't, maybe don't post her, like a picture of her on TikTok as the Instagram post. I don't know. The whole thing's weird. And I know this then started to create a whole argument about like, oh, well, should North be on TikTok? I really don't think that that is the problem here. Like there's just so many other things that are 
that are going on. Um, you know, he posted the guidelines of like, oh, you know, age, the age that you're allowed to be on TikTok and all those things. But North is on there. It is a, an account that is monitored by Kim or, you know, whoever is monitoring it. All the comments are off. Seems like it's just a way for North to make the videos that she wants to make. Um, you can argue all you want that if you think if you think TikTok is, you know, good for young minds, that, that's I feel like not the not fully the point here. It's just like having this be turned into like a public thing. Um, and of course, like as soon as Kim posted that statement, Kanye, you know, he posted a screenshot of that. He's like, what do you mean by main provider? Everyone saw you try to kidnap my daughter, like not letting me into her birthday, the whole thing again. Um Tracy, he then he wrote, Tracy Romulus, stop manipulating Kim to be this way. Like Tracy's one, one of her best friends, you know, manager, like helps put these press releases and whatnot together. And obviously Kanye is taking uh, an attack on her as well. And it just goes back, like he just keeps referencing that the birthday party and security and just not being, you know, wasn't be allowed into the party. But it's just like, there has to be rules. There has to be guidelines. It's just, I know he's complaining and, and whatever, but like you can't just pop in whenever it's convenient to you and feel like you can do it. He's like, I want to take my kids to Chicago, to my basketball game. It's like, okay, but you have to like talk about it. There has to be a plan. There, there, there are custody rules put in place for a reason. Yeah, I think that the obviously none of this is funny. And when I say that the funniest part, I want everyone to know that I don't truly mean that. But when he posted the conversation with one of Kim's cousins and one of Kim's cousins asked if it was safe, if they bought Yeezys off of StockX. So I lost it. And then Kanye Kanye responded, don't talk to me about Yeezys right now. Like that was just a ridiculous thing for the cousin to bring up. First of all, yeah. How you act like how are you gonna even ask about Yeezys in the first place in the middle of this conversation to ask if it's safe to buy Yeezys off of StockX, which like designers and shit probably get mad out when their shit is resold on these websites. Like you think Kanye wants to hear that you're buying his Yeezys off of StockX at a time like this? <laughs> The best part about it that just was ridiculous. The best part about that is that <laughs> the cousin, whatever cousin this was, seemed like a fake sends, cousin to me. I know, right? Sends that text with the hope of Kanye being like, "Oh, I'll just send you some." You know, like that's what she's hoping. You, you send that text, and you're th you're trying to get free easies. Like you're, you know. Oh, is it safe? Is it safe to buy them on StockX? Like Andrew wants belugas. It's like, oh, oh, does he? Does Andrew want belugas? Like, okay, you're sending this in the middle of the thing, hope, hoping Kanye's gonna be like, ah, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll just send them over to you. Like, no big deal. But she should have like, just been like, I'll give you her number if you just give me easies. Like that right? would have been like, better. That would. It, the, she might as well at that point. That cousin. I mean, my God. I don't know, man. I, I, that was a weird exchange. Weird fucking text. And it's like, he posts a screenshot first of the cousin being like, um, you know, I saw your post on Instagram about TikTok and your daughter. I'm happy to share what I know about that since I'm a single mom and want to keep my kids off the internet. Like, it's like, it, it, is it safe to buy Yeezys? And it's like, we'd love to see you and the kids soon. Like, what a fucking social climber this cousin is. Who who are you? Slide yeah. texting texting Kanye for for a little for some free shit and then also like hey let's all hang out soon um he then also like Kanye uh, clearly doesn't want to hang out soon yeah yeah clearly and then he also posted a he also wrote that uh her cousin Kara called saying she agreed with Kanye but she wouldn't she's not going to speak out publicly I think that this whole thing and I think you mentioned it too doesn't come down to just North being on TikTok. It's no, it does Kanye wanting Kim back. It's Kanye wanting control of the family. Because listen, the conversation around whether or not North should be on TikTok, valid conversation. She's pretty young. 
you know, what social media can do to people's minds at a young age is not great. But Kim's running the account. It's not North posting it herself. So there's a conversation to be had about that, too. And also Kim's like it makes North happy, something that brings her joy, happiness, expresses her creativity, which I think there's also an argument behind that. I think there's arguments for both sides about the about the TikTok conversation, but I don't think that that's what this is about. It's Kanye embarrassing Kim everywhere on social media and in interviews, making her look like a fool and like a bad mother when it seems like she's actually a pretty great mother. And Kanye, and I'm not calling him a bad dad, but like he also moved to Wyoming without his kids. He's moved everywhere without his kids and it's just all over the place. And you know, some, that was before the divorce, but now he's not even able to see them sometimes. It's just a whole mess and they're better off just taking it private. But for somebody who wanted privacy for so long, like Kanye did, it's weird that now everything he is making public. Yeah. And I just feel like it really does come down to a lot of, you know, he posted that he posted a text asking someone for Kim's number. And it was, I think like Steph Shep's husband or or partner, whoever it is was like, yeah, here you go. And like gave him Kim's number. It's like, so clearly they're not talking. It's just, I think, this has blown up so much. Kanye goes on these rants where like he is, I think he has been so used to having so much control over Kim and their family. And he doesn't have that right now. It's like he, he claimed he gave that family the culture is what he said. The quote gave that family the culture. Like he's basically taking credit for like everything um, that they've done. And just being like, I, I, now it's like insane that I can't see my kids. And of course he should be able to see his kids. Like he, there has, but this is the thing. Like when you're going through a divorce that clearly is not amicable right now, there has to be rules set in place. That's why you bring in third parties. That's why other people get involved because when the parents can't come to an agreement for the sake of the kids, someone has to come up with a plan because for these kids who are older now, it's a lot harder and a lot more traumatizing to see your parents fighting publicly or your dad trying to show up places that he's not supposed to be at. And it's just, it's just now it's, be, it's become sad. You know, Kim has deleted, uh, Kanye has deleted all of these um, Instagram posts. He said, you know, he's being called erratic. I should never, I, I should never not know, or, you know, I should never have to beg for the location of my family. He then also claimed that um, Kim accused him of putting a hit out on her. He 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 wrote one caption. It says, "You know, send me Kim's number." Is what I said before, and it's um, and the caption was, "Yesterday, Kim accused me of putting a hit out on her." So let me get this straight. I begged to go to my daughter's party, and I'm accused of being on drugs. Then I go play with my son, and I take my Akira graphic novels, and I'm accused of stealing. Now I'm being accused of putting a hit on her. These ideas can actually get someone locked up. They play like that with black men's lives, whether it's getting them free or getting them locked up. I'm not playing about my black children anymore. Um, it's just clearly uh, going on and on and on. And it's, it's Kanye is, is feeling very emotional about it. The silver lining, I think, is you know clearly Kanye does want to be a part of his children's lives. He, he does feel that way, but like, it just, when you're going through a divorce, you can't just get, you can't just get it exactly how you want. So yeah, then he thanked Larry Jackson for giving him Kim's number. And then he deleted all the posts. Fans thought maybe he and Julia Fox also broke up. She deleted a bunch of Instagrams, but it seems like I don't, they're still seeing each other. I put in air quotes. <laughs> Uh, if I was her, I'd be like, I need to take a break from this. But also, yeah. she's loving the spotlight, so... Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, that's it's it's a lot going on. That all happened all, you know, along the entire weekend. And Kanye has deleted all the posts. But I, it's just, hopefully they can figure this out. Not via Instagram posts. I feel like Kim put out what she needed to say. I don't think she's going to do that again. I think that's going to be the only time that she uh, says anything because clearly, like, look what happened. And they're going to have to, you know, like she said, maybe Connie is actually going to have to talk to that third lawyer he's had in the last year. Valentine's Day is almost here. I know that finding the special gift 
can be stressful. I love my go-to clothes. I just think you can always, you know, throw a couple upgrades into your guy's wardrobe. Uh, that's personally what I love to do. And this year I got a bunch of stuff from Bare Bottom Clothing. They're so great, so comfortable. Uh, this like high, high quality for a great price. They have their super cozy loft joggers and hoodies. They also have their stretch joggers and their tech tees. Everything is soft, stretchy, and made to last. The uh, tech tee and hoodie, I think, are some of my favorites. They're super cute. They look great. Uh, and if you need help finding the perfect style or size, Bare Bottom style experts are available via chat while you shop their site. Many of Bare Bottom's items are made with recycled fabrics or natural dyes to reduce their environmental impact. And for each item you purchase, Bare Bottom will donate a school lunch to a child in need, so you can be glad to know you're giving a gift that gives back too. Right now, our listeners can get a free bonus gift of one of Bare Bottom's super soft model briefs when you spend $75 or more at barebottomclothing.com slash chicks. That is a free bonus gift of one of Bare Bottom's super soft model briefs when you spend $75 or more at barebottomclothing.com slash chicks. Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott have welcomed their second child to this world. The child was born on 2-2-22, which is quite the date, and only yeah. Kylie Jenner's kid would be born on that date. So many people are commenting, angel baby, can't wait to meet the angel. So now people are speculating that the baby's name is Angel, but also 2-2-2-2-2 is angel numbers. Yeah. So that connection is there. Uh, I, I'm very curious to know the name as well and if Angel is involved at all, because I think if my kid was born on that date, I'd probably be like, hmm, I maybe need to incorporate the word Angel into their name. Who knows? But um, it's finally happened and they posted about it and all the speculation that she's had the baby already, this, that, the other thing. Not true. She just told yep. us that she did. I, it's so crazy that I just feel like Kylie has so much power that she plan this. Now I don't know her, <laughs> I don't know her birth story. Like, I don't know what her plan was. I don't know, you know, natural birth, C-section, what, you, you never know. I, I just, but it's just like, I just feel like Kylie had her mind set on having this baby on this day and it, she got exactly what she wanted. Um, you know, Stormy and now her son are a day apart. Stormy's February 1st. This baby's February 2nd. Of course, you get the very That's cool. crazy. I know. You get the very cool tutu. And it's crazy that that has happened now. And of course, it's not like the same day, but like Mason and Rain have the same birthday, right? Yes. So like, yeah, that's kind of freaky that it's happened now with multiple siblings having kids so close together. But I don't know. I think maybe Angel is incorporated in some way, maybe a middle name or something. I just would be shocked I think it would be so not the Kylie Jenner way to have the baby's first name be like announced to the world via Instagram comments from her friends and family. Like I'd be yeah. shocked if that's what it was. Yeah. And I saw some comments like hating the name Angel. Um, I know some angels and I like the name Angel. I don't think that's a bad name. I like the name. I like the name as well. Um, Stormy and Angel sound great together just as a pair. Like, I think the, the names, no. Why are you laughing? Names go well together. I just think that's a terrible name, but you think it's me. a terrible name? Yeah. Really? I think I just can't. It sounds weird. Like, no. Yeah, not my Angel. neighbor growing up was also like my brother's best friend. His name is Angel. His name. His is name is Angel. Boy's well, name? He's Dominican, so it's on hell. On hell. Oh, oh. So you don't say Angel. No, we say Angel, but his family says on hell. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of like, it's not like, no, I don't want to offend anyone. Never mind. <laughs> it's really All right, not. No, it isn't like the name Angel. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say, um... like, it's not like a stripper name, but like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be. <laughs> I guess Stormy could be too with an I, so. Stormy all, is uh, yeah. more of a stripper name than anything. <laughs> it also is very like on hell, very popular name. Like yeah. that's not a, so um, I, I think that I don't think that's the name. First of all, I really, I don't think that's how Kylie would have that come out. Um, but I mean, God, like, we're talking about the Kardashians here. Like the name, the kid's name isn't going to be like Steve. 
Like it, it it's just. <laughs> I, I mean, you know? Mason's a pretty normal name. Mason's a cool. Honestly, name. the Courtney's kids have normal names. Penelope R- is the most normal. Penelope name. is very, but like Rain, Rain isn't like, super normal. Really, I feel like that's not crazy. That's not normal. I don't know a single person with the name Rain besides Rain, Rain Disick. R e r e i g n. I don't know. It sounds more normal than Angel or Stormy or well, Chicago actually, or North. I would actually disagree. I think Angel is I think far Angel more common than Rain. <laughs> Way more common. Way more com- I mean, Kim's kids, no, North Chicago, uh, Psalm, Saints. Yeah, like, no, of course. But the fact that one of them's name is Psalm, it yeah. really flies under the radar. Like, I know. How did that one get approved? Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had that conversation with my mom the other day, very funny, where we were just like, I, I don't even know how we ended up on the subject. And she was like, repeat that? I was like, the baby's name is Psalm. She's like, Psalm, like, like with a P, like from the Bible. And I was like, yes, <laughs> like, yeah. That yes, has to that be is. confusing for other kids, like, because you know you, you don't you don't really know the silent P, the whole thing. Yes, growing up, it's got to yeah. be hard for them. Psalm, I mean, Psalm is still <laughs> Psalm is still very young, so. Um, I feel like you got to change that if you're like change what people like call he you. Doesn't. Uh, Tommy. Like he probably doesn't have to deal with that yet. He's only two. Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. I'll just go by Sam. Tom to Sammy. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> they ha- they have to have some. Ki- I'm sure they have some kind of nickname for him. I would I would guess. So, I don't think that this is the full um, name announcement. We know that it is. Uh, we know that it is a boy. You know, Chris Jenner had reshared. Besides the blue heart, Chris Jenner reshared. Reshared to wrote. You know, welcome. My my grandson, so that is it. But I mean, could not be more Kylie Jenner to have this baby on two 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 two. It's just, of course, I, I she had to have planned this, and then her plan went perfectly. Her plan was perfectly executed. If there's one thing that's for sure that I've really come to conclusion in the past few days is that I really have to stop eating junk food. I really have to stop eating fast food. I need to mix some fruits and veggies in my life. And thankfully I can always do that with daily harvest. Daily harvest is the easiest way to get more fruits and veggies into my day. Every single day, they have my back with delicious foods that also include foods that are good for me and also good for the planet. You know that they have the harvest bowls, the flatbreads that are my personal favorite, get a little artichoke flatbread, put in the air fryer, put a little balsamic on that. Good to go. They also have the smoothies and all all built in with organic fruits and vegetables delivered right to your door and they conveniently stay fresh in your freezer. So you get a whole pack of daily harvest, put in your freezer. It's good to go for the week, how many you need. It's great for you. It's there for you. So right now you can go to dailyharvest.com slash chicks to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash chicks for up to $40 off your first box. Once again, dailyharvest.com slash chicks up to $40 off your first box. They have everything you need. Check out dailyharvest.com. See what you want in your life, whether it's the harvest bowls, bowls, the smoothies, the soups, whatever it is, whatever it is that you want, they have it. So make sure you go to dailyharvest.com slash chicks and you'll get $40 off your first box. Okay. There is a rumor that Tom Holland and Zendaya may have just purchased their first home together. This is, um, Not totally confirmed. You know, it's coming from, I think it's coming from the mirror. (laughs) So it's, you know, equivalent to to like the sun and and, and whatnot. But they are saying that they bought like a a $4 million house, 3 million pounds in a friendly UK neighborhood. They bought it together. They're making Britain their home. They have got the keys to a six-bed London semi near a raft of celebrities. The 25-year-olds have big renovation plans. Their house will include a gym, cinema, and a man cave. Uh, He apparently already has a three-bedroom flat. And Zendaya has her home in Los Angeles. But now they have bought this property in the swanky Richmond, Southwest London earlier this month. 
And I don't know about you guys, but that sounds amazing. <laughs> it's just it makes Listen, me happy. That sounds good to me. They're both 25, right? Yep. So I, I feel like that's kind of normal, right? Like you see people in celebrities getting together way younger, buying houses together way younger. They're both 25 years old. She's going to have her house in LA. It's not like that's going to be her only home. So for them to have a home together, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, totally. Some other people that live in the, in the neighborhood, Mick Jagger and who have homes in the neighborhood, Mick Jagger, Angelina Jolie, Sir David Attenborough, Tom Hardy. Sounds very nice. Hey, they're going to have some great neighbors. Yeah, exactly. The thought of Tom Holland having a man cave made me laugh. Like, yeah. I, I don't know why the fact that they mentioned that there will be a man know. cave for Tom Holland made me laugh. I know. I know. I feel like that was a, uh, feels a little unnecessary. Um, of like, It's also like, how do, how do they know these renovation plans? But. Yeah, how do they it's know bad. Tom Holland's getting a man cave? Yeah, exactly. Unless it maybe like already has one. I don't know. But this, and who knows? Like you, tabloids make assumptions. Tom could have bought this house himself and then is like, you know, got plans for Zendaya to come move in or maybe they, but I could also very much see them being like, we're going to, we're going to put down roots together in, uh, in London. And just jumping in. Good for them. Speaking of renovations, have you guys watched the Pam and Tommy show yet? No. I did. I watched the first two. I have watched the first three as well. Oh, wait, there's three? I, maybe I watched I think I watched as many as there are. There's three. Okay, then maybe I I've not all watched three. it at all yet. What I'm do you think? The renovations. Um It's entertaining, I think. I think it's I'm I was definitely locked in for sure. Yeah. I think a lot of it is like cringe. Like it's but, a little were, but the question is were they cringe? Like, no, that's what I'm saying. Like I think that what they're my me and my family had this discussion. Uh and I don't know if I should say what I'm gonna say, but maybe I'll say it anyway. Um we had this discussion about them because my sister and I were saying it's kind of corny, kind of cringe, so were my parents, but my parents were like that's kind of how it was. Yeah. Like they did very much act this way, but I'm like, is it cringe and corny because it's people trying to act like them or are they doing a good job as them? Like my parents say that Lily James is doing a great job as Pamela Anderson. And I, we wouldn't know because we don't, we weren't yeah, really, we, just, we weren't in that era. Yeah. yeah. We were alive, but it wasn't like, you know, I mean, I wasn't actually. So we weren't in that era. We don't know how they acted in interviews. My parents said that they have, like Lily James has Pamela Anderson down to a T. They said that not so much for Tommy Lee. Yeah, yeah. But who knows? I, I don't know. That's I haven't me. watched anything about it. Are they are they renovating their home and in, 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 like in, the in the show? They're renovating that's like the their whole home. premise. Okay. Of that's the like the whole show. premise of the of the, like like, what happens is like the oh yeah. Home like Seth life. Rogen is like the carpenter and and gotcha. he's the one who yeah. Yes. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Also, my parents told me that they made a sex tape and destroyed it the next day, which is what I was going to say and then almost take it back. But whatever. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> because we were watching the show and then it turned into this whole conversation. And there was a, is it really destroyed? Yeah, they, they said they legit destroyed it the next day. <laughs> oh, man. I hate right, that. Fr I even... Fran, you want you want a copy, Fran? <laughs> <laughs> no, I could just I could just see them like telling you guys they destroyed it but didn't actually destroy it you know yeah. that would be trippy to watch that like say like 30 years like imagine like watching your own sex tape from like 30 years ago or something. Oh, wow. right and seeing how much you changed yeah just yeah my mom because i was like damn like maybe you guys if you still had it you could maybe like make a pretty penny as like my parents sex tape gets released and my mom was like oh that would be so 80s yeah <laughs> That would be so rock and roll of them. <laughs> yeah. Ew. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry I even brought that up, but it felt wrong not saying yeah. it after finding out that information. I'm going to swing this back to Zendaya now because I'm going to start to get uncomfortable. But she... <laughs> I'm she, sorry. Uh, if you watched the Euphoria from this week, um, she did such a phenomenal job that I think she did just like lock in another Emmy for herself. The season has been moving very slowly 
it feels like. Like the acting has been really good and you're visually it's really cool. But it's kind of like what what is happening? Right. Not not much, but it finally does feel like we're getting somewhere. But holy moly, is she just so mega talented. It's insane. Yeah, she really is incredible. I, I knew that the season was slow when I started like feeling bad for Cal. Like when yeah. I when I started to feel bad for Cal and rank him as like one of the top characters of the season, I was like, all right, let's move this along. I'm very, I think everything is, I'm still very intrigued. I'm not bored by the season at all. Like I'm locked in. No, no, I'm totally so, locked in. Like, when is stuff going to happen? But it seems like now after this episode, it's happening. Like we needed yeah. Cassie, we needed Maddie to find out about Cassie. Thanks to Rue. I think we're getting that. There's only three more episodes. Like there's, yeah, like, there's eight, there's down. eight episodes total. And we've, we've, we're, we've gone through five. Right. So. Shit needs, shit needs to go down. And yeah, it does feel like, um, as much as Zendaya is so clearly a star and is like, the story revolves around her. It, I'm ready to like, find out what's going on with the rest of the characters. Cause it's felt very real heavy. These like last three episodes. And it's like so much shit went on with with the with the tape and and the and Nate's dad. Like, there's just so much that I feel like has not been touched on. Yeah, there's so much, and I hate to even say this because we know that Nate is a terrible terrible person. He was looking hotter than ever in the last oh. episode. Like, not this that this past one because he wasn't in this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. The one from last week, he yeah. was, and I saw people like saying this on TikTok too. He was looking hotter than ever. I don't know if it was something he did with his hair, what he yeah. was wearing. It was like, oh my God, he was so hot before and now he's even hotter. He is just a, he is just a super hot man. That is, that is for sure. But oh, like, good Lord, is Zendaya a great actress? It is wild. Like you were just on the edge of your seat the entire, the entire episode. It was incredible. She's just, she's just a star. She really is. Yep. Last one is going to be quick, but I just, you know, I want to throw this in, in here because, uh, and maybe, and specifically, I almost specifically want to do it for Noah because I feel like no matter what, whenever we bring up Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, he's like, guys, how, how Brian Austin Green, down bad, huh? Got to be down real bad. And I'm like, he's probably fine. No, it's well, just because he's having um, a baby. Well, it's just when I first started, he obviously was very down bad. No, but you brought it up again when they just got engaged. No, I'm I just remember. always curious, like how how the other person feels when something like so public like that, and everyone's like so happy for them, and it's like yeah. this guy doesn't even exist. Not that I even care about Brian Austin Green at all. <laughs> but that's why it's interesting because you always assume like he's got to be struggling, huh? But he's well, he's having well, a baby. Is he just having a baby just for the optics? No. No, no. You wouldn't well, just have a baby for the optics. No. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is just getting back at Megan. I don't know. You I don't are think so. You're an asshole sometimes, <laughs> just to be an asshole. Wow. He, he, well, you're because wow, you're. Names. He, he's <laughs> doing. I mean, poor Shauna. Shauna, she's just, you know she doesn't have any kids yet. Yeah, she's just a pawn in his game. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, happy for them. Happy for them. They, I just think it's nice that he also has clearly uh, moved on as well. I think it's also because I'm just a big fan of Sharna from Dancing with the Stars, and she just seems awesome. So they're just more kids for them for him to take care of, right? Yeah, (laughs) by himself. As he would, as he would, (laughs) as he would claim, maybe he'll post another uh, grid, grid photo of all the children. Yeah, I'm happy for them. I feel like this is a great set for Brian Austin Green. Not much to say about it besides good for no, them. No, there's really not. There's really not. It's like everybody, you know, they're moving in separate directions, which is nice. All right, it's game on time. We're going into trivia. But first, guys, Coors Light, the official beer of Chips in the Office. You know how much we love it. You know that when we need some time to chill, unwind, relax, things are just Every day is go, go, go. It's nothing but nonstop hustle all the time. I know between work, friends, family, you have so many pressing issues in in your life. Sometimes you just need to be able to turn everything off and hit reset. That's why Coors Light 
is the only beer that's literally made to chill. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. So this week when we are in L.A. post-show after getting up there and having a great time, get backstage, crack open a nice ice-cold Coors Light, and enjoy ourselves. Just turn off for a second. Be able to celebrate what is going on. So that's why Coors Light is the one we choose when we need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash chicks. And always celebrate responsibly. This is coming from Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another game of Beat Rhea and Fran. This is game 30, and we are joined by the lovely Liz and Paul, who have sat through us through all our technical difficulties. So we thank them for that. Yes. We also haven't had a guy on trivia in a little while, so I'm excited about that. I'm nervous because we normally lose. Yeah, we normally lose when a guy's on too. Also, I don't these know what that two says about us. are friends from college, and we are happy to have you both on the show. Thank you guys for taking the time to do this. Thanks for having us. Amazing. So what do you guys say your, you know, where where do your expertise lie? Uh, Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> Both love Taylor Swift. Um, I've got the Jonas Brothers side, so we'll see how all of this starts to come together. Okay. All right. That's a, it's covering a lot of Fran yeah, topics sound right a lot there, like which Fran. sounds like I'm in. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. Just uh Get owned at my own game. Yeah, sounds like Rhea's going to have a lot to do it's like you got all, alone. <laughs> um, okay. This is game 30. Like Rhea said, to run through the rules, there'll be 15 questions. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. If you uh, get a question wrong, you the other team can steal. If we go to overtime, there is a, a three-question overtime round as well. And uh, to determine who goes first, Noah will give us a movie. We will alternate guesses on what that movie's Rotten Tomatoes score is. Whoever's the closest. Why are you looking at me what? like that? What? I, you're looking at me like confused. Me? Yeah. You two settle down. But no, no. I, I thought you had. I thought you had something to no, say. No, I kind of do have something to say, but yeah. I was waiting for you to finish. I'll just go back to where I was at the beginning. Sorry, guys. This we're all over the place. Um, okay. I'm good. <laughs> Rhea's great. She's just. You are. God. Why can't we be more like you? <laughs> okay. Whoever guesses the Rotten Tomato score is the closest number will get to go first. Noah, what is today's movie? Monsters, Inc. Great movie. Good film. Okay. Paul and Liz, you guys, one of you throw out your first guess. Go ahead, Paul. Um, 86. That's got, it's got to be. High. 92. Yeah. Should I go higher? Go lower, maybe. Go just lower. in case. 74. I'm going to go with like Monsters, Inc. I feel like that's one of those movie Pixar movies that's... I'm going to go with like 99. 96. Oh, nice. Right, so. right in between Right in us. between. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Just a movie laughs> <in> Pixar. <laughs> Okay, so Rhea and Fran go first. Rotten Tomatoes, they sneaky love the Pixar movies. Yeah, they do. They Doesn't do. it, like Inside Out have like 100%? 99, it? I think. 99. It's up there, Actually, yeah. I think... No, no, no. In Coco has a better score than Inside mm. Out. I think Inside, Inside Out has 90, 98. I think Coco's 99. Whoa. Yeah. Co I've never seen Coco. No, 97. Coco. Really? Oh. Then it must have went to down. Coco, yeah. Coco mm -hmm. is... Oh, no, no. Coco has a higher score than Moana. Mm. That's what it was. You don't have to search Moana. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> now you I was searching to. Toy Story. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, Toy Story is 100. Yeah, I was going to yeah, yeah, look yeah, up yeah. Moana up now that, now Wait, that what, I understand. What is it? Moana. Coco you never saw Mo You've never seen Moana? No. Oh, God, Moana's great. Coco. That has a 95. 95. Yeah, 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 they're all up there. Coco is so good. Coco is also so, so good. good. All right, anyways. Yep. <laughs> okay. Question number one to Rian and Fran. Shout out Sarah from Connecticut. What celebrity does Miley want to see when she sneaks out to the movie theater in season one of Hannah Montana? A, Will Smith, B, Ashton Kutcher, C, Jake Gyllenhaal, D, Leonardo DiCaprio. Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. I think it's Ashton, Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Correct. Nice. 
I'm glad we were on the same page with that one. <laughs> Let's see how many fist bumps we can get in today. <laughs> All right, one nothing, Rian Fran. This is question number two to Paul and Liz. Shout out Amanda from Florida. Name this year. Ben Affleck was People's Sexiest Man Alive. Lilo and Stitch is released. Kelly Clarkson won American Idol. Okay. So it's got to be like 2004 or 5 ish yeah. range. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, early 2000s. Trying to remember where I lived when Kelly Clarkson won. Um, I, I would say three or four. Ten three or four? Okay, well, I said four or five. So do we go with 2004? Sounds good. Okay. 2004, final answer. Incorrect. <laughs> 2003. I think it might be. I think it might be lower because I specifically remember my 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 babysitter took us to see Lilo and Stitch in theaters, and I bawled my eyes out. And I was little, like I'm, when she worked for us, like I was little. 2002. I kind of want to say 2002. That also seems like the kind of time. That and I think that might be, be when. Am, I think alive. that might be when American Idol started. Like Kelly Clarkson first season. All right, let's do that. Is it, is it 2001 then? Three no, seconds. No, I, I think 2002. 2002. Correct. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, One the, fire. <laughs> not to bring up Inside Out again, but the um, that Lilo and Stitch movie theater experience is like, what's the yeah. memory, like the... Scratch and stuff? No, no. Like in Inside Out, when they talk about the memories that... The core, it's a core memory. Um, core memory. It's a core memory. Yeah. I thought you were it's referring... Not to, um, I just said, I said, uh, I'm not to bring up Inside Out again, but that Lilo and Stitch movie yeah, theater yeah. experience is a core memory. Mm. <laughs> the scratch and sniff for the Wild Thornberries movie. Yes. Oh. You remember that? Yes. Weird memories coming 4D. back. 4D. Yes. Oh, yeah. Fucking great awesome. Movies. <laughs> okay. Question number three. Rhea and Fran are up 2 nothing. Shout out Ren and Lizzie from College Station. Name all six Infinity Stones. Not Shit. Good. Not gonna be me. This is not, this is embarrassing too. I uh, won't even give it a shot. I thought this was gonna be easy for Fran. This is the thing. I can name some of them. Ten seconds. But I feel like I, sh I know I can't do all of them. So I feel like strategically, I should just say nothing. That is very <laughs> smart. That is right. very smart. We're using our brains. Yeah. Time, time's yeah. up. Time's up. Yeah. I got some, but I don't want to reveal because okay. I don't I, have six. I feel like Paul knows it, though. <laughs> uh, can, can I go? Yeah. Do it, Paul. So, uh, mind, power, soul, reality, time. Mm. Oh, do it again. No. Mind, power, Soul, time, reality, space, space. Correct. Nailed it. Power. That it. that was not coming to me. All right. I, I was like reality, so mind, time, <laughs> soul, yeah. and that was all I got. Two one, Re and Fran. Question number four to Paul and Liz. Shout out Meredith from New Haven, Connecticut. And cheaper by the dozen too. Taylor Lautner and Allison Stoner's characters go on a date to the movies. What movie did they see? Fuck. Crap. No. I literally just watched. Is it? It's, oh, no, wait, it's this is not our question. Not no, question. Oh, sorry. Okay. By all Good means, thing. go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you can tell us. No. Good thing I saw. Yeah. Um, shoot. I don't remember. That's not going to come to me. No. I can see the whole thing. Trying to put his arm around her shoulder. Parents is back. Time I is up. I can't know. Yeah. It was some type of stupid movie, right? It, it was. Was it a romance? I keep thinking the Notebook, but I feel like the Notebook was. I'm getting the note like just friends. They go see the Notebook, and I. And I it's not the Notebook. No, I'm picturing like a cartoon movie. Oh, but that could be wrong. Um. Ten seconds. I don't know. Elliot Murtaugh. <laughs> what do they go Three, see? Two. Can I go to the movies with Elliot Murtaugh yeah. tonight? <laughs> Fuck. Time is up. I don't know. I don't know. Nothing? Ice Age. Oh, well, there you go. Oh. You were close. 
I said some stupid movie. Yeah. <laughs> Cartoon. You know, they're making another Ice Age movie. I keep seeing commercials. How many for it. did they already had six? Disney I think. Plus. Yeah, Disney Plus. Damn. Okay. Still two one. And they all kind of sound different, which always that was like when they would change the I actors never watched for any of those, I think. Okay. Question number five. Shout out Sarah from Damn, Queens, New York. This is to Rian Fran. It's a simple question, but I'd be curious. If you got this wrong, it'd be interesting. I hate the... I, he knows he... Literally nothing I hate yeah. more than the disclaimers he gives yeah. before the question. He questions. knows we hate that, too. Just read us. And he still okay. does it. <laughs> Name six songs by John Mayer. Oh, Waiting on the World to Change, Dreaming with a Broken Heart, uh, Gravity. Uh, your Body is a Wonderland. Wonderland, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. Didn't I say that the first time? No. Oh, wait, I said Waiting on the World to Change. Uh, the World to Change. Gravity. Gravity, Body is a Wonderland. Dreaming with a Broken Heart. Um, 15 seconds. What's um, his recent one? Slow fire. <laughs> What's that one? Slow t- slow dancing. And what is the one? Come slow on. burning slow in a dance. Yeah. <laughs> slow, da- slow dancing in a burning slow, room. Yes. Slow, slow dancing, dancing in a burning room. Yes. Slow dancing in a burning yeah, room. Yeah. And we need one more. And, Three um, seconds. Three seconds. Uh, uh, Time is up. Time is up. I think you lost, you didn't get it. <laughs> How did we not? All right. It's a Paul and Liz. It's he, we, oh, my God. He really gave us no. He did. He well, I mean, like, what? Time is up. Time is up. Because it is. Like, are we just going to, like, go? We were just I know, but that, that, that should be one that gets a little bit more time yeah, to name six, six songs. songs. John Mayer. It's, like, pretty easy. You Says the John Mayer super I, fan. I could name Names. six Jonas Brothers songs. No, but after this. <laughs> oh, after this? All right. To Paul and Liz. Um, your body is a wonderland. Yep. Gravity. Gravity. Half of my heart. Uh huh. Um, slow dancing in a burning room. Yep. Um, waiting on the world to change. Waiting on the world to change. What was the other one I said? I don't remember. <laughs> Damn. No. Uh, um, Five seconds. Five seconds. Oh my god. Three. Two. No, what, what did one. they say? Time is up. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, what's the one that ju- is neon oh light? God. One, one. Neon. Neon. Yeah, that's the one I was trying. You're to think thinking of. of the one that came out. The other. What's the one that just came out? Like, oh, uh, on his last album. On his last album. That was like the, one the more pop. Likes. The one that everyone likes. Like, oh, new light, new light, new light. Yeah. Neon, new and new light. I just combined the, in my you, mind into one song. Like, uh, Slow burning in a dancing room. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a tongue twister. I mean, come on, we got there eventually. Burning it's just we knew it was. We we we, we got knew there. It was we got there eventually? <laughs> yeah. I mean, all we knew half of my heart. Six. We told you Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, I know. I really was thinking about like, should I make it ten? Because six is gonna be too easy. No, I mean, you gotta act like you're not a John Mayer super fan. And think we like outside not, of that box. Like, he's not like a niche we na- artist. Yeah, but we just named all of his most popular songs. Yeah, that like one that is not a John Mayer super fan would know. Yeah, like got to step out of the John. Really, don't Mayer you box. like the Heart of Life? Uh, now I'm looking at John Mayer Spotify just because I'm like. Which- I mean, because of course now you'll be like, oh, I know I can name every single one of these songs. Right. But six is a lot. Sucker. When the clock is running. Blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know if I can name six. Yeah, exactly. I probably could. I probably could. In in but John thirty Mayer ha- seconds, John pro- Mayer has in thirty, more, in 30 has seconds, more. probably not. Now this it's might offend you, but John Mayer has more hits and more I mean, songs. It's true. That's that's John just Mayer, obvious. John yeah, Mayer. Yeah, like no, that's what I'm saying. So it's easier for her to name John Mayer songs than me to name Jonas Brothers songs. Okay, moving on. Your bias. Also, is, your bias. Sorry, is showing. we're Swifties. Your bias is showing, but. <laughs> okay. Question number please, six. Please, please. My heart can't handle the fighting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so exhausted. <laughs> Come on, parents. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Can't live in this house anymore. I'm going to have trauma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number six to Paul and Liz. Still 2-1. Rian Fran, shout out to Malaroy from Detroit. Mallory? What? I mean, I'm just gonna guess her name is Mallory, right? It is. is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Mallory. Mallory. (laughs) Mallory. Okay. Yep. Mallory. All right. Sorry, Mallory. That is funny. (laughs) That honestly, Uh. I can't even. That's something I would do. So I cannot even blame you for that. (laughs) Sometimes you read such an obvious name or word that you end up pronouncing it wrong. 
<laughs> Matt Elroy. All right, go ahead. All right. <laughs> what is the name of the high school football team in Friday Night Lights? Dylan Panthers. Dylan Panthers. <laughs> Correct. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> well, you have got it. Sometimes yes. I feel like you say that, but then if you got it, you wouldn't. You remember went through, I went through my... Uh, she went through a Tim yeah, Riggins phase. I wore a Tim Riggins phase. This office made, every day. made like Panthers yeah, t-shirts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tied up at two now. Texas forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out Amanda from Florida. This is question eight to Rhea and Fran. In Gilmore Girls, Rory and Dean had an on and off again relationship. What's the reason that they broke up for the first time? I never watched Gilmore Girls. Neither have I. They just, they like broke up so many times. They broke up and got back together a bunch of times. I don't know if the first time is Jesse or something else. The first time. Five Fucking seconds. Fucking Chad Michael Murray's character. Three, two, mm, one. Time is up. I, it's all right. She should have just Liz. said an answer. Paul and Liz. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you take it, Paul. Uh, no, I I am not confident in this one. I'm gonna let you take it. Oh, it's when they're in the car and he says I love you and she freaks out. I'm pretty sure that's the first time. Is that the sure. final answer? <laughs> he says I love you and she. <laughs> He doesn't say it back. Yes, she's correct. Like, yeah. Correct. All right. Are we tied? Three, two, them. Oh, what? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yep. Oh, Dylan Panthers. All right. Damn. Three, two, Paul and Liz. This is question number nine to Paul and Liz. Shout out Haley from Chicago. List these Nickelodeon animated shows in order of their release. Danny Phantom, The Fairy Odd Parents. Avatar, The Last Airbender, The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. I should have just said Jimmy Neutron. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Jimmy Neutron, Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, Avatar? That would be my guess, but I don't know. That's Final what we're answer. going with. Incorrect. Mm, Fairly, Fairly Odd gone, Parents. I would have gone with that. Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy then Neutron. Jimmy Neutron? Danny Phantom, Danny Phantom, then the last Airbender. Yeah. Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, uh, Danny Phantom, then the last Airbender. Correct. Nice. Goes so 01, 02, 04, 05. Yeah, for a second I was worried about Avatar there, but Danny Phantom was on early. Yeah. Later than the other two, yeah, but earlier yeah. than Avatar. All right. Question number 10 to Rian and Fran. I'm going to play a clip from a movie. You tell me what movie it's from. You, you don't need us to tell you what to do. We're a board of advisors. We're, we're not your kindergarten teachers. And if you want to be taken seriously as an adult, I suggest you start taking yourself seriously as an adult instead of asking for permission to invest your own money from a boardroom full of your daddy's golf buddies. Hitch, final answer. Yeah. <laughs> nice job, Fran. I would not have gotten <laughs> yeah. that. You still haven't seen it. No, I've seen oh, it, but saw. just like once. Yeah. That's when he storms into the boardroom, Kevin James. Yeah. Such a great movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Four, three, Re and Fran. Caroline from Long Island, back from oh, Hey. hey. <laughs> we actually have a couple of Caroline. Hey, from what Island. up, Caroline? <laughs> All right. What Taylor Swift song, this is to Paul and Liz. What Taylor Swift song do most people speculate to be about Taylor Lautner? A, Love Story. B, White Horse. C, Back to December. D, Mine. Back to, December. back to December. Final answer. See, back to December. Correct. Final answer. Yeah. Did you know? Yeah, I, I knew. I just for the record, I knew that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like to say that I did know that one. All right, tied up at four. Putting numbers on the board. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good game. <laughs> Civil. We've been having some low-scoring games recently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just getting a lot of questions wrong. Okay, question number we twelve to Rhea and Fran. Shout out Amanda from Florida. Amanda from Florida has had quite a few questions. Is her third one <laughs> in this game? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. not in oh, there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes the questions are just like, <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> You're the one saying it out loud. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm still stuck on Malaroy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was funny. <laughs> okay. Question number twelve. List the following from most to least Teen Choice Awards won. 
Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus, One Direction, Justin Bieber. For for, for most, most to most least. to least. Teen Choice Awards. I'm gonna give most to Justin Bieber. Bieber's gotta be top. Most Justin Bieber. I would go maybe then One Direction. One Direction. Yeah. Then Jonas Brothers. Then Miley Cyrus. Because I feel like Miley Cyrus was too risky to get a lot of Teen Choice Awards uh, awards at one point. Yeah. Or but the Jonas. I don't know. I might put Miley before, before the Jonas, Jonas Brothers. Brothers. Okay, let's do that. Five seconds. Yeah. Let's put Miley before. Because Miley Jonas like Brothers. covers more categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do Justin Bieber, One Direction, Miley. Jonas Brothers. Incorrect. Shit. Damn it. I was going to go with their original. Yeah, me too. Okay, so Justin Bieber, One Direction, Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus. Also incorrect. It's <clears throat> is One Direction lower? No, One Direction is one. Then Justin Bieber, mm. then Miley, then oh. Jonas Brothers. Interesting. One Direction is 28. Oh, Justin one, Bieber so is 23. We were right if we swapped One Direction and yeah. Justin Bieber. Yeah. Shit. Damn. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. Popular guys. Still tied up at four. Question number 13 now. Shout out Bree Murphy from Edgartown. Nice. Yeah. Brittany Murphy? Bree Murphy. That's Brie probably Murphy. why she. No, Bree Murphy. Oh, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tour in Brittany to Bree. No. She could, could. Be a, she could be a Brianna. True, true. Yeah. Okay. Harry Potter question. How many. This is too. Um, Pressure's off for me. This was for Paul and Liz. Yeah, it's just a Paul and Liz. <laughs> How many of the Harry Potter books did J.K. Rowling write before the first movie was released? This was in the doc, wasn't it? Huh? I think this was in the documentary. Is it three or four? Well, the fourth one, the fourth movie didn't come out until... I lived in Michigan, so like, oh, five-ish. Um, three seconds. Oh, uh, three. Uh, three. <laughs> three. Three. Incorrect. Is the, the question is how many, like, how many were published? How many were written? So she could have written one, but not have been released. How many were written? Before the first movie came out. I think maybe like two. I'm gonna go with two. Final answer. Incorrect. It's four. Oh well. The fourth are... one came out like the same year, but after the movie, mm. after the first movie. Got the it. One. All right. Still tied up at four. We gotta get this one. We have two fourth questions one. left. Yeah. We gotta get this one. Shout out Bethany from Manhattan. This is to Rhea and Fran. Besides Zach and Cody. I knew this was going to be a sweet Me question. Me too. How did they're I, always at the I, end. I, they're I always at the end. Too. And Fuck. I just feel like we're and getting you know, I haven't brushed up lately. I, yeah. But go. Besides Zach and Cody, what two characters appear in every single episode of The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody? Um, besides Zach and Cody, what two characters? Uh, you think maybe Mr. Mosby? I was going to say Mr. Mosby and... 15 why but what about maddie in london but i feel like maddie goes away at one point but i feel like five i'm seconds. gonna say i'm gonna say mr mosby and carrie the mom seven. sure mr mosby and carrie correct yes really yeah wow <laughs> nice bull <laughs> wow i'm happy about that one i'm surprised you even got her name why wouldn't I, I get her name? I, I didn't I, know I, her I, name. I thought you would have been like, oh, their mom. Oh, no. Which would have been fine. But. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Final question. They need this one to go to overtime to Paul and Liz. Shout out Caroline from Long Island. Caroline, don't <laughs> don't let us down. In Zoe 101, what is the name of the fictional drink that the students are always drinking? <sighs> oh. Can't you ask what Jonas Brothers song was for Zoe 101? <laughs> um, I can it, see it. I don't know the name, though. Is it like Pop Fizz? Or was it the sports drink one? Um, 10 seconds. I don't remember. Pop Throw Fizz. Gets out. <laughs> Pop, Pop Fizz, final answer. Incorrect. I also thought Fizz. 
And then, but he, Paul also said sports drink, and didn't they, wasn't that like a big, with the sports drink? Something fizz. I don't fizz, know. I fizz, don't know. Fizz juice. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Fizz you, juice. Yeah. <laughs> It's correct. It's Blix. 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 That's the sports drink. Yep. Damn. That was it. All right. Final score. Wow. Five, four. Wow. Close so one. Close. close. <laughs> Look at you with the sweet life pull. Ah, I really pulled in with that one. We would have went, we went to OT. And we sh we also <laughs> should have gotten that job. <laughs> we should have. That, that was disappointing. That was crazy. And people are going to be disappointed in us. No. That's all right. Can't definitely. Win them all. Definitely. But yeah. There, do you think that the average person in this office could name six drum yes, songs? Yeah, Probably. Yeah, I let me tell yes, you something. No, the clock, happy, yes. the <laughs> clock puts a pressure on, and yes, you're yeah. like you're you decide what questions you start at ten or five or three. So like honestly, you start at ten. You're like ten seconds, no, five I, seconds. Honestly, sometimes I hate to admit this. I'll you see don't even you, look at the I, clock, or I think that maybe like you're you're gonna get it, and I just say the time just to like add some pressure on. I know. Yeah, of we course know. you do. We know I, you do. I bet you if whoever was listening, if they timed actually how no. much time we all got for each I think I'm not no, making no, no. time I up. think he actually times it. I think oh, he oh, just oh. Yes, says he things says out it. loud yeah. to make us nervous. Which is yeah. what he did on the John Mayer. Yeah, he did he, do that. Because he, he started so, so early so in the countdown. Was, <laughs> he was so excited when we didn't get it. Time's up, time's up. Moving on. Time's up. Listen, Paul, you guys got yeah. it. <laughs> oh, it was man. good, though. Guys, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you so much. You guys were great, and you're put put up with thank our you. bullshit yes. to start this. Thank so you, thank so, you much. so much for uh, putting putting up with us through that. <laughs> and you guys were great. <laughs> you really yeah. were. We're the opponents. Thank you guys oh, thank so you. much. Thank you guys. So nice meeting really you guys. Really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Bye. Nice Bye. Too. Bye. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Reminder, the LA show tickets are in the link in the description to buy right now. We want to see you there. We also have Wells as our special guest. He wants to see you there. Make sure you subscribe everywhere that you listen to our podcast, including on YouTube. We're seeing those subscribers go up and we love to see it. So make sure you keep subscribing. We love you and we'll talk to you on Wednesday.